Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Philip Leonard Philip Edward Anton von Leonard was a German physicist and the winner of the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1905 for his research on cathode rays and the discovery of many of their properties. He was a nationalist and anti-Semite. As an active proponent of the Nazi ideology, he had supported Adolf Hitler in the 1920s and was an important role model for the Deutsche Physik movement during the Nazi period. Notably, he had labeled Albert Einstein's contributions to science as constituting Jewish physics. Early life and work Philip Leonard was born in Pressburg on 7 June 1862. The Leonard family had originally come from Tyrol in the 17th century, and Leonard's parents were German speakers. His father, Philip von Leonardus, was a wine merchant in Pressburg. His mother was Antony Baumann. The young Leonard studied at the Pozzoni Kirili Catholicus for Gymnasium, and as he writes it in his autobiography, this made a big impression on him. In 1880 he studied physics and chemistry in Vienna and in Budapest. In 1882 Leonard left Budapest and returned to Pressburg, but in 1883 moved to Heidelberg after his tender for an assistant's position in the University of Budapest was refused. In Heidelberg he studied under the illustrious Robert Bunsen, interrupted by one semester in Berlin with Hermann von Helmholtz, and obtained his doctoral degree in 1886. In 1887 he worked again in Budapest under Lauronio Tvos as a demonstrator. After posts at Aachen, Bonn, Breslau, Heidelberg, and Kiel, he returned finally to the University of Heidelberg in 1907 as the head of the Philip Leonard Institute. In 1905 Leonard became a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, and in 1907 of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. His early work included studies of phosphorescence and luminescence, and the conductivity of flames. Photoelectric investigations as a physicist, Leonard's major contributions were in the study of cathode rays, which he began in 1888. Prior to his work, cathode rays were produced in primitive, partially evacuated glass tubes that had metallic electrodes in them, across which a high voltage could be placed. Cathode rays were difficult to study using this arrangement because they were inside sealed glass tubes difficult to access and because the rays were in the presence of air molecules. Leonard overcame these problems by devising a method of making small metallic windows in the glass that were thick enough to be able to withstand the pressure differences, but thin enough to allow passage of the rays. Having made a window for the rays, he could pass them out into the laboratory, or, alternatively, into another chamber that was completely evacuated. These windows have come to be known as Leonard windows. He was able to conveniently detect the rays and measure their intensity by means of paper sheets coated with phosphorescent materials. Leonard observed that the absorption of the rays was, to first order, proportional to the density of the material they were made to pass through. This appeared to contradict the idea that they were some sort of electromagnetic radiation. He also showed that the rays could pass through some inches of air of a normal density and appeared to be scattered by it, implying that they must be particles that were even smaller than the molecules in air. He confirmed some of J.J. Thomson's work, which eventually arrived at the understanding that cathode rays were streams of negatively charged energetic particles. He called them quanta of electricity for short quanta, after Helmholtz, while J.J. Thomson proposed the name corpuscles, but eventually electrons became the everyday term 
in conjunction with his another earlier experiments on the absorption of the rays in metals. The general realization that electrons were constituent parts of the atom enabled Leonard to claim correctly that for the most part atoms consist of empty space. He proposed that every atom consists of empty space and electrically neutral corpuscles called dynamids, each consisting of an electron and an equal positive charge. As a result of his Crookes tube investigations, he showed that the rays produced by irradiating metals in a vacuum with ultraviolet light were similar in many respects to cathode rays. His most important observations were that the energy of the rays was independent of the light intensity, but was greater for shorter wavelengths of light. These latter observations were explained by Albert Einstein as a quantum effect. This theory predicted that the plot of the cathode ray energy versus the frequency would be a straight line with a slope equal to Planck's constant h. This was shown to be the case some years later. The photoelectric quantum theory was the work cited when Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Suspicious of the general adulation of Einstein, Leonard became a prominent skeptic of relativity and of Einstein's theories generally. He did not, however, dispute Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect. Meteorological contributions Leonard was the first person to study what has been termed the Leonard effect in 1892. This is the separation of electric charges accompanying the aerodynamic breakup of water drops. It is also known as spray electrification of the waterfall effect. He conducted studies on the size and shape distributions of raindrops and constructed a novel wind tunnel in which water droplets of various sizes could be held stationary for a few seconds. He was the first to recognize that large raindrops are not tear-shaped, but are rather shaped something like a hamburger bun. Deutsche Physik Leonard is remembered today as a strong German nationalist who despised English physics which he considered to have stolen its ideas from Germany. He joined the National Socialist Party before it became politically necessary or popular to do so. During the Nazi regime, he was the outspoken proponent of the idea that Germany should rely on Deutsche Physik and ignore what he considered the fallacious and deliberately misleading ideas of Jewish physics, by which he meant chiefly the theories of Albert Einstein including the Jewish fraud of relativity. An advisor to Adolf Hitler, Leonard became chief of Aryan physics under the Nazis. Some measure of Leonard's views on certain scientists may be deduced through examination of Leonard's book, Great Men in Science, A History of Scientific Progress, first published in 1933. The book was translated into English by Dr. H. Stafford Hatfield with an introduction by the famous scientist Edward Andrade of University College London, and was widely read in schools and universities after the Second World War. The individual scientists selected for inclusion by Leonard do not include Einstein or Curie, nor any other 20th century scientist. Andrade noted that, a strong individuality like that of the writer of this book is bound to assert strongly individual judgments. The publisher included what now appears to be an equally remarkable note on page XIX of the 1954 English edition, while Professor Leonard's studies of the men of science who preceded him showed not only profound knowledge, but also admirable balance. When it came to men of his own time he was apt to let his own strong views on contemporary matters sway his judgment. In his lifetime he would not consent to certain modifications that were proposed in the last study of the series. Leonard retired from Heidelberg University as professor of theoretical physics in 1931. 
He achieved emeritus status there, but he was expelled from his post by Allied occupation forces in 1945 when he was 83. He died in 1947 in Messelhausen. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.